stick around to the end of this video because we're going to see if I can go to Poland, check out a brand new city, brand new country that I've never been to, visit some football teams, eat some food, see a great city, all for less than a train ticket within the UK. Considering it's five in the morning, it's actually quite light out here. Yeah, I'm absolutely knackered. I'm exhausted this morning, but I did a video very, very similar to this um, where I visited Denmark, um, all for less than a train ticket from Glasgow to Brighton. My mate invited me to an FA Cup match uh, down in Brighton, but I just couldn't go in the end. The cost of just the train alone was absolutely extortionate. Check out what I said during that video earlier this year. We're gonna see if I can go to Europe, have an amazing time, visit different stadiums, fly there, get a hotel, all the things involved in taking a trip to Europe, all for less than the price of a return train ticket from Glasgow to Brighton. A friend of mine suggested that I go with him to Brighton away in the FA Cup. He, like me, is a Liverpool fan, and he suggested that I go down with him. And so I thought, yeah, why don't I have a look at it? I don't think I could go in the end because of the other fixtures that I'm needing to see um, within Scotland that weekend. However, I thought I wasn't gonna drive all the way down from Glasgow to Brighton. That is a huge trek. Why don't I check out how much the train is gonna be? So the game is on Sunday. So if I wanted to leave Glasgow on Saturday, get there the day before and leave the day after, it was gonna cost me upwards of around 186 quid. An off-peak return was 186. Yeah, we've got 186 pounds and my flight back from Poland is about 26 hours after my flight there. So we have around 24 hours, basically got a day in Poland. It's a football channel, so we're gonna check out at least, hopefully, one football team. We went to two in Copenhagen, um, but yeah, we're gonna be visiting the stadium which hosted the Europa League final between Man United and Villarreal as well as checking out Poland too so let's get in the terminal check in and hopefully grab a little bit of sleep on the plane there we go one small step for Sam North one giant leap for footy adventures. Here we go, taking my first steps inside of Poland. And we gotta get on a bus. We have to find the way out. I wonder how much it's all gonna cost and where we've actually gotta go. Here we go. Are we gonna take the Pocky Ag? Are we gonna take the auto bus or a taxi? I think it's gotta be the blue, let's go. One ride for all lines, 480's Lottie. Um, let's buy one of those. Now obviously I'm gonna tell you everything at the end of the video, how much it will cost. But 480, I've just checked Revolut. That's the perfect thing about Revolut. Again, it's not sponsored by Revolut. Wish it was. Um, 92p. 92p to get the bus uh, to the airport. That is unreal value here. I just met two of the nicest English guys who um, weren't on my flight, but they were in coming one from Stansted Airport and they'd been to Poland numerous times. They didn't want to be on the vlog, but they just brought me down here, which is apparently the main street of Gdansk. And it's absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Poland, my first ever steps inside of Poland. I feel like uh, at the airport, it's not real. It's not like really, really inside the country. But now look at this, look at these buildings here. We will be going to uh, the football club in a second, and it is where Man United played Villarreal, like I already said, in the Europa League final uh, quite recently. Look at this, we've got a massive cathedral in the back, and this is, I think, one of the main epicenters for, uh, for World War II as well, so um, we're going to find out a little bit more about that. But we need a coffee first. Still not had one. Although it's called Gdansk now, it hasn't always been the case. It used to be called the Free City of Danzig, um, which is actually a German word, I think, for Gdansk. Um, and it actually used to be more populated by German people. I think it would have been Prussia back then, though, um, in those times. But it's changed hands a lot down the years, as has a lot of Poland, um, and it's specifically changed a lot. And it has been this way it is today since the end of World War 
two. Three pound eighty four for the coffee. I feel like that's quite a lot, but we are in. Whoa, look at that down there. Quite a touristy area here. Here we go. This is the World War Two Museum. The main entrance is this way. We're going to go in in a second, but I believe is this an air raid shelter? It says it might be. It does make sense that that would be like a, an air raid shelter that they've kept from the war. You can't come to Poland and not check out stuff about World War Two. And you'll see. I'll show you on a map right now where Gdansk actually is. It's right in the north of Poland on the coast as you can see but it is basically slap bang in the middle of where sort of warring superpowers have been for centuries. Your Russias, your Germanys, your Prussias all the way back to when uh, Russia was ruled by the Tsars and uh, yeah Germany was Prussia and then all throughout World War One, World War II. Um, this has been a really troubled part of the world but it's amazing to be here now in such peaceful times considering what this area has been through down the years. 29 zloty, five pound 50-ish to get in here. And um, it seems like a massive museum. Um, but here we go, the Second World War was the most tragic conflict in the history of humanity. It was launched by the totalitarian regimes of Germany and the Soviet Union, which cooperated with each other. They committed acts of unimaginable cruelty and crimes in the name of lawless ideologies. So there was some great stuff in the museum um, that I got some clips of that I'm gonna give you a voiceover for just now. Um, obviously, you can look into World War II yourself, what started it, what ended it and stuff, but there were so many things even from like Gdansk itself. So like the object objects on screen right now are from Gdansk prison, um, which is where people were held during the war. Polish people, obviously, um, Polish prisoners were taken in there um, and obviously not treated very well um, by the powers that be at the time. This was a huge part of the coast which um, Poland was trying to defend after Germany attacked Poland on the 1st of September 1939. That's what set off the Second World War. Poland's allies, France and Great Britain, declared war on Germany two days later but didn't launch the agreed upon offensive on the Western Front just then. Um, according to Hitler's orders, the objective of attack was to obliterate Polish statehood or the military operations which were aimed equally at the armed forces and civilian population were to be conducted with the utmost brutality. Germany and the Soviet Union actually worked together on partitioning Poland and uh, on the 17th of September the Soviets too invaded Poland and that did complete the partition of Poland in those early stages of the war. Um, Poland and Lithuania were to be in the Third Reich's sphere of influence while the Soviet Union was basically given Latvia, Estonia, Finland, Romania and Central and Eastern Poland. Uh, so sorry, yeah, the West of Poland and Lithuania were sort of under Germany's control. But absolute atro uh, atrocities that these people, these poor people and the Jewish people went through, um, they were humiliated, they were coerced into cutting off each other's beards. Um, the cities of Poland were bombed by um, Germany and Luftwaffe. There was so much discrimination against the poor people of Poland. They were put in freight cars like this one and sent to concentration camps all around the country. But yeah, like I showed you on the map earlier, um, it's quite a key location strategically and thus played a big important part in World War II. Almost a quarter of Poland's entire population died between 1939 and 1945 absolutely mad stuff and what a museum that is in there um, I sadly couldn't spend as much time in there as I wanted um, it's currently quarter past two and I want to get down to the stadium and have some food and show you some other things as well but you could honestly spend four or five hours in there genuinely I went around fairly quickly but I hope I did enough justice of the um, of the story during the war to show you especially like particularly linked back to Gdansk as well um, but Poland in general I mean absolutely destroyed during the war when the Soviets and the Germans were allies in the early days they cut up Poland and um, kept pieces for themselves and then once Germany turned on the Soviet Union and then the Soviet Union obviously fought back against Germany that's when the tide of the war changed and Germany started to lose a bit of its power most of its power and then the war eventually came to an end because of that I suppose um, <laughs> Poland was in the middle of it again so even when the Soviets and the Germans were getting along Poland was in the middle of it all, with some disastrous effects on the country, and then obviously when Germany and the Soviets were fighting, probably just as bad if not worse for them, all the concentration camps, the Holocaust, the genocides of the poor Jewish population as well. Um, but yeah, you can learn more about it if you're going to come to Gdansk in this incredible museum for five quid as well. You could spend hours and hours in there. Sadly, I don't have the time today, but I feel like after that, I need a beer.
What about Gdansk, the city? Is it a nice place? This People should come? More than 1,000 years old history. Wow. It is the Amber Way from the Gdansk yep. uh, through the Wroclaw, through the Vienna, through the Rome, through the Napoli from 1,000 years. Yeah. They sell ambers. There is fish mark here. Well, there was the fish mark. Yep. In the uh, 15th century, there was uh, a lot of fights about Gdansk. Yeah, yeah. Because there was German, there was uh, Osterreich, yeah. there was Russian. The Russian uh, burned the town in 95%. And when they, when they came to rescue us, yeah. they burned the town. And they had to rebuild? We have to rebuild. And it's a beautiful city as well. It's like new and old. This place, yep. 500 years old. 500 years old? Even a little bit more. Wow. In the, they, 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 they used to build in 1481, 1482. Yeah. And, and should more day. people come and visit Gdansk? For sure, but there's many people in here in the summer. Yeah. They just crowded so much. There was maybe four or five years ago, the Gdansk was like the visitor was six million per season. The beer is great. The people are nice. The prices are fantastic as well. And the weather's amazing, look at this, but um, how lucky are we? How lucky are you to be watching this YouTube video? Not because it's my channel, but I just mean in general, like after seeing what we just saw in that museum, how lucky am I just to be sat here in these peace times in Poland, in Gdansk, used to be a free city, then it was obviously occupied for so long and uh, it's changed hands down the years, but now it is a part of Poland and, um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place to come and visit. I'm just so lucky to be sat here. I want you to stop whatever you're doing right now um, and look around you. Maybe you're on the train to work. Maybe you're watching at home. Maybe you're watching on your phone or your laptop. Just take in what is surrounding it. Just take in um, your home or your commute or whatever and just appreciate how lucky you are um, just to be sort of living in the time that you are compared to obviously the people that um, that we just saw in that museum, sadly. Still not eating anything yet. We're gonna have this quickly now. Two pound 50 beer, you can't beat that. Now, I know the um, airport bus was like 90p, but Uber seems very cheap as well. So we're gonna grab an Uber. When we did this video in Denmark, the flight was cheap, the hotel was cheap, ish. Um, but everything there was quite expensive, whereas here I feel like we're going to get a great bit of value, honestly. Still got quite a bit to play with too, so um, yeah, let me order this Uber and we'll get, get down to the ground. This is a football channel after all. Do you like Lekia Gdansk? I'm from Ukraine. And I... Oh, you're from Ukraine, okay, right. Yeah, Where... My favourite team is Shakhtar. Shakhtar Donetsk. Yeah. Willian was from Shakhtar. Willian, yes. Fernandinho. Fernandinho and Man City. Yep. Yeah. How long have you been uh, in Poland? Uh, one year. Oh, since the since the war in Ukraine. Yes, yes. Do you think you'll ever return? You hope to? I hope, but yeah. I think it's not really. Oh. So Shakhtar, even before the war, they were playing in Kiev. Uh, they play their football matches yes, in, Kiev yes, yes, in Kiev for a number of years. Yeah, Lviv? Lviv? Okay. Oh, what a cool guy. I mean, and I was just saying about how lucky we should feel after visiting the World War II Museum. He's from Ukraine. He's here as a refugee from the Donbass region, which if you know your stuff about the what's going on out there right now, Jesus. Anyway, what a cool guy. We give him, giving him a tip on Uber, a really nice person. Anyway, here we are. Look at this at Poland's Golden Stadium, the Polsat Plus Arena, home of Lechia Gdansk. Here are Lechia Gdansk in the table. Look at them. They are, are they gonna get relegated? I think they've got three games left and they're nine point, yeah, they're oh, 11 points away. Yeah, they're going down. They're gonna get relegated and they play in this huge stadium. Um, but let's go and see if we can get inside. When was the stadium built? Uh, for the Euro 2012. Okay, and you shared that with Ukraine? Yeah, this construction, it looks like a base, like a skeleton of the ship. Yeah, so oh nice, okay. And so it's amber because that is the city's stone, you say? Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, shape of our stand. As you can see, in the middle, it's slightly higher than in the corners. Yep. Because it's the shape of the uh, wave. Final also, for the Europa League was here? Yeah. Recently? That's Manchester United shirt. 
And oh yeah, they played Villarreal in the final. So Gdansk. This is when you had the Euros, yeah. Yeah. Blazikovsky. This is our our national one of our national uh, players. Yeah. Oh, this is in the city, right? Yeah. That's the cathedral. Yeah. This is uh, on our old town. Yes, I saw that earlier today. We have some memory flags. For example, this is from the match with the with the FC Barcelona. Yeah. You can see here. This is the sign of. Um, Leo Messi. Oh, is that Messi Messi. there, yeah? Yeah. That is Messi, wow. Messi, Alexis. And where's Neymar? Uh, Neymar is Ah, that's Neymar. So quite a lot of the players in Poland religious, so they will come and pray before a game? Uh, actually, it was a rule from the UEFA that if you want to have a Euro on your stadium, you need to have this kind of place. Oh, it home. says Euro 2012 yeah, exactly. on there. That's why uh, most of the stadium in Poland don't have uh, this kind of place. Is this what it looks like when it's full? Yeah, this is from the match, uh, as I said, the biggest between two Polish teams, yep. with Le- Legia Warszawa and there was uh, 37,000 people. First in Poland, a uh, hybrid club. Oh, a that's first hybrid pitch that, yeah, in exactly. Poland. Okay, cool. Uh, that means that it's made uh, 70% of the real grass and the 30% of the fake one. Ah, okay, cool, yeah. That's, uh, that's why we changed it after about uh, three to four years. Yep. But of course, it, it depends on how much it was used. It feels so, very big from here. When you're down this, it feels very big. Yeah. And it's 42,000, <laughs> 42, you say? 42,000, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, and if you look closer to the middle of our pitch, you can see that it's slightly higher than the rest yeah. of our grass. Yep. Uh, do you know why? Is, Is it to drain the water? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. That was unreal. You're not gonna believe how much this tour costs. This is Braga prices, honestly. And how weird is this? Every time I do a tour for this price, it's always a private tour. It's the same at Braga. Let me just load up Revolut. Four pound 82. I think the Braga one was six euros, which is like a fiver as well. Less than five pound for a stadium tour there. And it's actually really, really good as well. So yeah, this stadium here was built for the Euros in 2012 and it is an absolute beast. And I like that they've like put some um, thought into the design, like it's meant to look like a bit of a ship. They have the wavy sort of seat design to, um, as, a, as like a nod to the waves of the, the sea, I guess. And then the gold, or the amber from the outside, is because uh, the amber stone is the stone of Gdansk. Anyway, it is currently, 4.35. All I've had today is a coffee and a beer. When you think of Poland, this isn't the first thing you think of, is it? 20 degrees, beaches, blue water, and fine sand. If that sells beer and food, I think we may have just found Poland's most scenic restaurant. 61 Zloty for a water, a lek, or in footballing terms, a Poznan, obviously, a view like this, and the food that's about to come, which I shall show you. This has been, like, this channel's took me to some weird and wonderful places, but this has got to be up there with one of the best. 11 pounds 40. Just had a couple of Lex, couple of Poznans down by the beach. What a place this is. And before we get back to Scotland in the morning, how long have we got till my flight? What is it now? It's uh, almost seven o'clock. My flight's at seven o'clock in the morning. So I'm gonna have to go to the hotel at some point and check in. And like the best thing about these um, really, really short stays I have, this is the only bag that I need to bring with me. Um, 
<laughs> get another Uber, you know. They're so cost effective and they get you straight to where you need to go. Um, yeah, I need to show you the hotel, don't I? And then we'll get back to Scotland in the morning and I will wrap up how much everything has cost. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Right, so there's the airport that we came into this morning. And uh, yeah, my booking on booking.com says I should be around here. Pokoji Goskin. Uh, let's try and find it. It's a weird one. To... Oh, God. Oh. I know you're in a proper hotel when you get a real key. But here we go. For £40 a night, you get a few bugs on the floor and a picture of a waterfall TV, a little TV up there. Don't think we're going to be able to watch it from the angle. Let's go on bathroom watch. This will do the job. We've got about six or seven hours in here, have we, until we need to... Well, our flight's a little bit later than that, but yeah, we're going to have to do something about the bugs, but it's all right. It's a budget trip. So my flight is actually at 5.30 in the morning. I've just checked. I've checked in and yeah, something that I usually do when I come away is like on Ryanair, you can book to have an extra bit of baggage or like choose your seat and get priority boarding. It's like one little extra add on. You get all that stuff. It usually costs like 20, 30 quid per passenger. Didn't do that today um, or for this trip um, just because I want to keep costs down, obviously. Literally just got this bag with me. Boxes, socks, camera stuff, laptop, chargers, that kind of stuff. Um, and I've not booked my seat. So I've got an aisle seat um, again, just like I did today. So that's fine. I'm not middle. That's absolutely perfect. But um, yeah, I check out of here at what? three four in the morning Oof. it's gonna be a rough one but um yeah i'm gonna edit the stuff from today and i'll see you in the morning i'll maybe see you when i get back to scotland not sure how this vlog's panning out yet but um yeah we'll go through all the costs and see if it costs less than a train ticket within the uk oh what a long day i got up at what 3 50 this morning i think it was um i was in the airport at like just after four flight was at 5 30 but we've made it back to scotland i've edited pretty much all the video right up until this part now so i'm gonna reveal how much everything cost i had an amazing time out in poland um but firstly we had airport parking that was 19 pounds 99 pence then my flight was 77 pound 33 when i did this for denmark the flight was only 30 quid so i already spent like a lot more just on the flight itself the hotel 40 pounds and 49p the bus from the airport just 92p the coffee that i had was eight uh, sorry three pound 84 the museum was five pound 57 the beer that i had after the museum two pounds 70 my first uber including a tip was four pound 81 the tour of the stadium was just four pounds and 82 pence that is unreal my uber from the stadium to the beach was £3.86 including a tip and then my food two beers and a water at the beach was £14.45 and then my uber from the beach to the hotel at night was £7.76 and what did it all come to I've totaled it up and I actually can't believe it. I didn't try to hit 186 I tried to just go there not spend too much um, and get sort of in and around that region. It came to 186 pound and 54 P pretty much on the nose from what that train ticket would have cost me when I did this video originally, where I was thinking of going from Glasgow to Brighton. So for just the train from Scotland to Brighton, we had all that stuff. Everything that you've seen in this video was just the cost of the train. If I wouldn't have had like one extra beer here or maybe I'd have got a bus instead of an Uber, it would have come under that amount. Um, I may have been able to get a cheaper hotel if I'd have booked it in time. I booked the hotel a day before, I booked the flights like a week before. So maybe if I'd have booked it further in advance, I would have saved a bit of money. Maybe going at different times of year, you'd save money as well. Um, so yeah, what a great challenge this has been. I absolutely love these types of videos where I go to completely new places. As you may be able to see through my videos, I don't just love the football, I 
love the history of places, the geography, everything like that. And to mix it all together, these are genuinely like my favorite videos to film. I absolutely love it. If you want to check out that Denmark video, then I will leave it on screen right now. Yeah, do go and check it out. It'll either be here or here, either side of my head. Um, yeah, if you haven't already seen that one, similar challenge to this, um, where I try to see some football and some culture within Copenhagen, all for less than that price that I just showed you there. So yeah, thank you so much for watching till the end. Please do click on that Denmark video and goodbye.